welcome back to advertising is dead uh, we're talking to pooja hi pooja welcome to um, advertising is dead I, i can't believe i haven't called you on this podcast yet hi thank you for having me 150th episode yes 150th episode i feel very special thank you I, you know i was sitting on saying okay you know i've always had this thing about okay what do you do and this like 50 100 150 and i've realized that what i what i really have come down to saying i want to have bring conversations which i know that i am going to be super comfortable with but also which i'm like why have i not done this before like i think it's it's that now like why have i not done this because uh, i think 150 is too late to get you onto this podcast uh, and i'm happy i finally got you on uh, because you and i have spoken about a lot of things you and i have spoken about being an entrepreneur content creator i have bugged you at random times uh, asking you but once again i'm doing this content piece but there's also business how do i make them merge together and Um, <clears throat> and the most of... important question how do we make our podcast make money <laughs> exactly how do you make a podcast make money most important question for all <laughs> how do you make money i think is something every content creator yeah. is is fully sitting and saying how do we do this yeah. uh, i want to kind of start off by doing a bit of like a, a rewind right like almost from a clip note saying uh, was this always what you wanted to do is uh, was the aim always to work in the pastry side of things food side of things create I think the, the creator part will bring in later, um, but more from the entrepreneur side. Has this always been a focus? Um, so I think that you know, growing up, baking was always a passion. It was always something that I did. Uh, whether it would be my career or not was you know not something that I was sure of. Um, I always had these dreams of you know owning a cafe, being in the F and B business. Uh, my dad is an entrepreneur and has built his business from scratch. So I knew that I didn't want to do a job anywhere. I knew mm. that I wanted to build my own business. Um, for a brief moment, I went to law school. Um, mm. Did that? What? For, yeah, when I was sixteen, seventeen. I don't know. Somehow I was like, okay, I should go to law school, and then I'll figure what I want to do. And I went to law school for two weeks. I saw the books, and you know, like when when you know something is so wrong. Mm. and i went and had the conversation with my parents told them that i don't want to do this and then that led me to hospitality so yeah i mean i always knew i wanted to do entrepreneurship business in some format um and you know the pastry came to me like that tube light that that bulb that went off saying mm. this is this is what sh- that happened in actually hospitality school in switzerland you know yeah i can't picture you as a lawyer um somehow this is a part <laughs> of me is like a bad lawyer <laughs> nicest lawyer ever no it's okay let's agree to all clauses and move <laughs> what will happen um but you know and that's inter- you know what you just said about the fact that i think that what we surrounded by many times when we growing up also in many ways you know you know directs us towards direction in what we want want to do right i mean it's almost like there's that slight nudge and then if you realize the nudge suddenly catches on um like I had that nudge towards do you want to be a doctor when I was growing up and did not work. Um, uh, like till one day my father heard a thud next to him and looked aside and I was in theater next to him and I had fallen flat because I saw blood. Mm, so definitely not going to be a doctor is what he realized. But uh, when you kind of leave that circle and you go into let's say you know like you went to hospital school and 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 stuff, um, there are also things that you learn about the space which you might not have really known about. So what was that period like in terms of no. Because there would have been certain things that have gotten instilled in you during that period, which which kind of brought you to where you are. So, what were those? Oh, that is such a good question. Because I was seventeen, and I was like, "I'll do hospitality." I mm. had no idea what hospitality meant. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I went to Switzerland, and luckily, my brother studied with me. So, both of us were together. So, it wasn't as alone, like new country, mm. new language. It was. I mean, it was a great experience because, for once, it was like I got to be who I. wanted to be there was no like yeah. preconceived notion of this is pooja because when you grow up in bombay and you know everyone has this idea of who you are and what you're going to end up doing now i was like i can be my, myself which was great for me but it was also just understanding the industry right like i mm. realize everyone is like oh i love food i should open a restaurant i love drinking i should open a bar without realizing what yeah. the back end work of that is and for me that was the realization right we'd start our days at 6 a.m. we'd start with breakfast service and by the time we would finish i would come home you know it's like you're standing for 14 15 hours but then you come home you're like exhausted and you're dead you spend all like you know you went through different departments so mm. understanding what that meant like hotel management what does that mean yeah and um, yeah it was like a it was like a big the first 6 months was 
just breaking me into that and being like oh this is what i've signed up for and then after you know i got used to it is is when i actually fell in love with it and like oh i love this aspect of it I, maybe i don't like this that much but mm. i prefer this and you know so it, it all kind of came together you know and if you fast forward from then to when you when did you become a content creator in your head because i think yeah. that i i'm, I'm going to pick these two because i think that's the both starting points you know, what is a, even a content creator i don't know so for me um it was always i love documenting things right mm. right from my childhood like if you go through you know one of my 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 childhood best friends came over the other day and we were going through all these old photographs that we have from school and i was that person in school in the 5th and 6th grade who would get a camera and like just randomly take pictures and my friend is going through these albums and she's like you realize this is not a special occasion it's not like this is an album of a birthday party this is an instagram feed this is a friday night in your house you know like we all we are all just chilling like you know like this is so i've always been that person i've always mm. been that person who loves memories and you know very emotional and kind of taking all of that in so for me finding a platform like instagram was just like second nature it always mm. it was almost like documenting uh, my life my day oh this is what i'm doing now this is what i'm baking now and for many years you know it was like maybe a lot because i was like out of control and i was posting mm. a lot and i was doing everything and all my friends were like this you know this is too much but i was like this is just me representing yeah. who i am through uh, you know this and uh, it, it things compound right so now it's been 11 years of doing that 10 years of doing mm. so i don't know when uh, someone the other day in an interview called me a content creator and a chef i was like oh i didn't know when that switch happened yeah when that switch happened yeah <laughs> so um, yeah i just embrace it now i love it i feel like i document my day i distill everything that happens around me and i showcase what i do for a living it gets challenging when especially last year when work stopped i mm. asked myself these questions because for me it was so incidental right mm. think it was was just part of my job and it was what i was doing and then when my job stopped i was like oh what am i now so yeah. yeah i've been through that whole journey of what is content creation you know you mentioned last year right and and i want to get it because i know that there's there's been i mean you've been through a journey not just like through your entire to love 15 but also the last cup i think the last year has been a, another entire journey for you in that sense um and, and but just before that, i want to ask you that when you set up what did you what did you want to set up let's let's start with that like what, how do you kind of start off by saying okay I, i know i've done this i i've i've studied hospitality now i've always wanted that cafe and i always wanted to do stuff around um pastries and 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 everything else and um macaroons i'm i'm guessing is is has is obviously the which i've and i would thank you for sending some <laughs> of those i have i have just finished finishing the entire box um but at what was that starting point like what did you set out to do and how did that evolve over time so i basically before i moved to paris so i went to switzerland i went to the you know that's when i realized i want to do pastry i came back to india and i went to my parents and i was just like i wanted to live in europe i was you know young in love whatever i wanted to be there mm. so i went and told them that i have a plan mm. i will go study pastry in in france and i will come back and i will open this chain of patisseries i will have a central kitchen and i will open these stores not like i don't even know how they believed me but they believed mm-hmm. me and i went to paris and you know i ate the macaroon and all of that the concept kind of started becoming clearer when i was away but the minute i came back it's almost as if like i had the blueprint of what i wanted to do ready in front of me mm. and i was you know when you're young people always say like oh inexperience is bad i think in my case the fact that i was so inexperienced actually worked in my favor because yeah. i didn't know the limits of what i could and could not achieve so at 23 i was like i can do everything yeah. you know i can do this also i can be that also there's no like who are you it's like what do you want to do and who do you want to be to achieve that right so i still remember the pastry landscape 12 years ago was very different in the country we didn't have i came in you know i was also right place right time um i had a book Mm. I didn't have a business plan but I had mm. a book which I knew was going to be the direction in which I wanted to go I read like this uh, and also for first time entrepreneurs who really want to get started there's this book called The High Performance Entrepreneur by Subroto mm. Bhakti it's one of my favorite books and I gift it to people when they set out on their own so it's a very special book to me uh, but I read that and I was fully in the zone of I want to start my business etc so I I I had this you know this book in which I would cut up 
images for magazines. So it would mm. be images of pastry shops. It would be merchandise. It would be what the display counter would look like. It would be pictures of the people that I wanted as customers. So I would, you know, like I I went in and I took out all these things. It would be pictures of uh, you know awards I wanted to win because people mm. it was. You know, and like ten, eleven years ago, what was manifestation and what was visualization, yeah. and I just knew that okay, this is what I want to do, and I made that plan and I kept it aside. I didn't really it wasn't something that I looked at or anything, but I just knew that I had to keep working every day, and eventually I would get somewhere there. And you know, like yeah. five years into Love Fifteen, I think every part of that book was was pretty much done. You know, and I was like, yeah. oh, it's time for a new book. Yeah. there are a couple of things i pick up from the red one is this people have this notion that you need to know exactly what to do before you kick it off um and and it's not even winging it it's almost like okay now let me just see where this goes i think is is isn't given enough prominence because honestly that that was my journey as well right glitch we didn't know what glitch was going to be like we we were two guys who quit our jobs saying okay let's see what we let's do something fun literally let's do the business plan what let's do something fun but uh what i like about what you just said is there's that layer of let's put a scrap book down almost of, of um all the things i want as elements you're not saying this is the plan you're saying i would love to have all of these together and 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 while you're saying this i, I remembered um you have in that in a sense what you said is actually how spielberg builds his movies steven spielberg has a system where he okay. says what think about <laughs> it like <laughs> Steven Spielberg has this system where he takes all the scenes he would love to have in a movie and he puts them down on a, on on a sheet. So when he's writing the movie, he's throwing those in there. Like when he's writing Indiana Jones, he's like, "Oh, I'd love to have him being chased by a a real large rock. That'd be a great visual." Mm-hmm. Now somewhere in between writing the movie, okay, this let's drop that scene in here. Um so in that sense, you don't necessarily have to have you'll have need to have all the moments you want, all the things you want, but um I really like that part, and I think that that's one core thing many people cannot take off from. Um, and obviously, the the book didn't have what last year brought about, right? Obviously, oh, um, I don't think any book in the world would ever. Yeah, have exactly, that. right? Yeah. Um, and so, tell me about that period, because I know that uh, because I I do know you personally as well. I do know that you went through yeah. many questions, and it's for more for and also for across all entrepreneurs, anybody you know, they were the questions that kind of come up exactly like what you were faced with. And how do you kind of work around? How do you move ahead from that? to be very honest you know last year around march was when low 15 actually completed 10 years you know mm. in the business and it was the first time i was like hey you know what we finished 10 years you're a profitable company you're a good company you should be proud of yourself so i yeah. uh, first of march i was like yay <laughs> and little did i know uh, by the end of middle somebody or somebody came of march, behind and said hey yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. when you least when you least expect it right yeah. like i was it's like you've studied for one paper and you know like you you you're ready for it and you go there and this is a completely different you know yeah. question change completely so yeah. that was the feeling i had um it was a very um lonely experience because we were all isolated at home and you had to make mm. all these big decisions alone um i felt like um there were many at least the first few weeks there was so much confusion because you didn't know you know the reality of what was hitting us and how this would pan out in the longer picture obviously the fnb business was very badly hit mm. and we are a business that relies on our cash flows we are not like yeah. a tech company like i would speak to my friends i remember calling suchita and she's like yeah i have 18 month runway i was like 18 months month runway like, yeah. Yeah. i was like you know it's going to be tough in 2 months for us to pay rent and pay salaries yeah. etc like it's going to get challenging yeah and at that point you know even raising money from the market was a little bit no one was putting their money because there was so much uncertainty and no one was putting money in food because they were like let's just wait and see how things will pan out etc so mm. it was tough because i knew that i had to you know i mean i had for the first time in my life i had like a pros and cons list i never do it but mm. for the first time i had a pros and cons list of keeping low 15 and shutting it down completely right mm. Mm. something that you built with your whole heart for yeah. you know like 10 years i like i've made all sacrifices built everything for 10 years towards this and suddenly it could all go away so it was a time of asking really tough questions it was a time of uh you know who am i if i'm not this person uh, it was very spiritual in mm. a way you know, this whole experience and i think a lot of people went through that right they yeah. went through asking themselves hard questions 
and um, at the end of it you know i just after like many weeks of just crying in one corner looking at excel sheets i said you know what let's just do what we can i i work with a leadership coach who's mm. often you know who who tells me to look for the the opportunity in the crisis mm. so as i was like there is i'm faced with probably one of the biggest crises my business could ever be faced with i have to shut down half the business but what can i do to kind of salvage it a little bit mm. and the love that i saw you know when i announced that i was shutting the cafe the love that i saw from people i was like wow yeah. i knew that i built something that i love but to see like thousands and thousands of messages pouring in so we we took that we made a cafe cookbook we made another you know book which helped us survive and in that whole process i think i kind of figured you know what's the next best step what do mm. i do next and i think mm. that's what you're talking about right now you don't yeah. need to have a full concrete plan in front of you but just what's the next best thing and that's i kept doing that i was just like i remember talking to you and i was just like one day at a time one day at a yeah. time yeah. today over today was a good day let's wait for tomorrow so that's yeah. that's what last year was like and and also you took that time to because i was running through your book right and and as i was running through it i was like this is almost like you took sometimes when you are in a situation like this you kind of go back to why did you start doing this in the first place and in many ways your book feels like that your book feels like you went back to think this is why i i wanted to do this so this is the, this is almost like ground zero of of uh, of of my entire motivation to do it so um when did you start working on it i know that you've written multiple books but uh, this one feels a little extra special this one is extra special like all the other books right they followed a very specific theme so it was about like easy baking for the indian home kitchen or healthy baking or eggless baking this one i was like why am i baking you know like mm. and the pandemic happened and suddenly everyone was baking banana bread and making sourdough yeah. and stuff so yeah. what is so magical about baking that makes you feel like you have some control yeah. and you have some like um you know comfort and joy in a time that is so uncertain and you don't know what's happening around you so for me it was really i was i almost felt like i was 23 again right i was mm. back in my parents home kitchen i was in pajamas all day there yeah. was nothing else you know i was baking like I, you know like i have a 5000 square foot professional kitchen here mm. with like a 60 people team that can yeah. do anything that i want and now i was at home with no ingredients suddenly you couldn't find butter was out of stock and sugar was not available so yeah. i was like what is in my pantry what can i do with this and it just yeah. became a, um you know when you when when you're passionate about something and it becomes your profession mm. over the course of 10 years that passion kind of starts fading a little bit in the day to day right so for me it was just about like oh why do i really do this if i quit and I, and one of the things i thought of right i thought mm. i'll i'll just stop this altogether and i could be a content creator right i yeah. just yeah you had a podcast it. you were doing content and Yeah, so I was like, I'll become, you know, I'll get into the content business and take that up full time and all of that. So I went through all those sort of phases, and and this book was just like it was born out of this. No, this is my journey as as Pooja, right? It's not in isolation. Mm-hmm. The recipe is not going to make any sense, but yeah. this is what defines me. This is my relationship with food. This is my relationship with baking, and yeah, man, it's it's really personal. And I was very nervous to to yeah. write it and put it out and. the thing is when you're in your room you know like when you're writing this in the middle of the night and no one is there you just i'm like i'm talking to a friend and yeah. now suddenly I'm like oh everyone's read what that's <laughs> like so yeah. it's it, no it's it, but i'm happy that i did it and that's what i i find interesting about how you function right there is obviously there is the entrepreneur side of you there is the side of you then there is the content creator and i feel writing is in many ways very different from being content creator because it's, it's it's a longer process it's almost like you know you, you are in it and you know you it's almost like it becomes a part of your process and at some point you don't even know when to stop or when to let go and and move ahead so um and then there's also the podcast which you do which is in many ways to me is different from regular content creation because it's not like you're documenting you're actually doing that and um and so when you look at all of these how do you map your life around because this this and it's not about productivity i guess it's more yeah you're satisfied across all so so you know i i basically i like to kind of go with a rhythm and flow of what i'm feeling like at that any given moment right and i like to view it as um you know if if you if you literally had to make a venn diagram of your purpose and your strengths hmm. and where that overlap right wherever that overlaps for me is where i can, where i grab my vision from yeah. so i'm like okay what is it that i'm really good at what do i feel like is my purpose 
and how do i kind of you know i, I like i, I so the podcast for example right yeah. it was not something that somebody told me to do it wasn't something that i thought this will be great content let's create it i just genuinely felt like there's as an entrepreneur there's not you know as an indian entrepreneur there's not too many places i can go to where people are being real about their problems you know yeah. no one is saying this stuff everyone's like crushing it killing it fundraise unicorn ipo like all of that yeah yeah great but like who's really talking about you know what happens when you work 16 hours and like you know something completely spirals and every day yeah. spiral right yeah so um it actually came out from that space so um i just kind of go with that sort of feeling and rhythm and flow and see okay what is it that i want to solve for next and i go mm. with that so um and i just truly enjoy it like there's no other i wouldn't do something if it was if it felt like this is work because yeah. i do have a day job all this other stuff kind of gives me the creativity and drives me and brings me back to putting yeah. in more into this you know so that's how i like to function now i have a bunch more stuff to ask you but i have been told that we need to go in for a break um so we'll do that and be right back with that testing is dead i've been keeping track of what intel's been doing and they've impressed me yet again you heard about intel v pro huh yeah um, you know for security and manageability there's nothing quite like intel v pro it helps manage and protect your organization's computer systems from cyber attacks and keeps them functioning at their best capacity it's something i found in my experience as well right cybersecurity is something that you can't take lightly like whether it's personal or professional we're definitely doubling down on this it's a must absolutely you know with intel's threat detection technology which is built into the intel hardware shield your company's it department can quickly detect and remediate the latest ransomware and crypto mining attacks and there's also all of their below the os security right which helps identify unauthorized changes to hardware and firmware and then they have application and data protection which helps prevent memory corruption and malware injection by isolating different machines on your organization's network which in the end basically reduces attack surfaces you know it's good to see that intel has a platform that's built for business Yeah it really is I mean like you know the Intel V Pro platform also enables cloud based manageability so in the event of a cyber attack it lets you remotely manage and repair systems simultaneously even if they're not at the same location You know this is a godsend for these work from home times especially Amen to that just go check out Intel V Pro and Intel's other amazing product at intel.in/itheroes Intel V Pro it's built for business Welcome back to advertising is dead we're still talking to Pooja uh, you know one more piece where i really enjoy about how i think there's a there's a crossover that you've been able to do with your entrepreneurial side and your content creator side is that whenever i see a collab that you do which is with a brand um it feels very like a content collab but it's actually in a product um and i don't know maybe it's just the way i've seen it i've seen that and i think that really works from a consumer side right so um is there a process you go through when you say okay okay like i know you did something with bumble sometime back and um, there's also the diwali ones which have come which are literally like almost like a mithai ma- macaron version um so what's your process like when when you're doing uh, when you cuz you're bringing two things together yeah so for, for so it's so what i do for my own you know social media instagram is is uh, you know i divide that between what i do for love 15 mm. um so with love 15 collaborations like it's quite exciting it's something that i've been doing since i started you know we've collaborated with designers from the first you know from from year one whether it was nachiket barve masaba gupta mm. nimish yeah. shah all these people right so um the the collaboration that we did now with pavitra rajaram who used yeah. to be designer good earth is i'm such a big fan of her work Yeah. and i was like how can you take and and design and packaging at low 15 is something that you know i give a lot of my attention yeah. and focus to because i love to see that process so uh, that just happened very organically it was meant to happen 3 years ago and then pandemic happened and this mm. and then no money and all of that so finally it 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 happened now and i loved how it took shape and form and and came to life um for my own you know collaborations actually the bumble one was super interesting because it was me plus low 15 yeah Yeah. Really we've done some like these with Amazon um and I think it's exciting to be in this space right because I did something for Shark Tank and I'm just like okay this is great because this is these are things that I truly love and enjoy in yeah. yeah and if I can kind of weave my story in through with it it just yeah. fits and like you said right it doesn't seem like uh, a sotham it seems like okay this yeah. is organic and it's natural so yeah. I really want to I I say a, I say no to a lot of things as well 
and, and that's one very important lesson and something that I learned a few years ago. And I was like, you don't have to say yes to everything that comes your way. Um, and it's very tempting when you're, you know, especially when you've gone through the pandemic and work yeah. really, you know, you are like, okay, I could use this, but just, you know, I feel like there has to be some alignment with your belief systems. And if that happens, then, you know, it's, it's really magical to see the end result. You know, that saying no part is so important, right? Uh, because it's like you said, it's easy to say yes to things because they're coming towards you. I think we say yes to things many times because we don't we feel that if you say no, what if this person ever comes back to us? Or, you know, what if this is kind of souring a relationship? But the other side is that, oh, it, it, it seems exciting in the short term, but sometimes we forget that in the long term, does it really add up to what you're trying to do? So um, do you have almost, do you almost go by an instinctive uh, filter or is there actually a, a is your, it ticks these boxes? So instinct is always first. Mm. First instinct will tell me whether it's yes or no. And then even instinctively, when I've said yes to something, I'd also see what kind of time commitment it will take, right? Mm. Like if it's something that's short term and it's fine and it's it's worth worthy of my time and, and efforts, I say yes. But mm. something that is very long term but will require a lot of time and energy, which will keep taking me away, I have to, you know, I was like, this is your day job, <laughs> you know, so this yeah. is what, if it's taking me away from this, it has to be really lucrative. And if it's not, then I just say, you know, I'm going to spend my time and energy just on low 15 and nothing else. So it's really about the two things, instinct, and then also the amount of time it's going to take from me. Yeah. Uh, you know, one more aspect, which is, which just keeps coming up is the fact that all content creators now in many ways are building businesses. So there's, there are two sides, right? One is you have a, you, you run, you're building a business and you become a content creator to amplify it. Or you're a content creator who's building a business because that's the way to monetize and grow. Um, what's your system for making them work in a way that you know the, the content creation satisfies you but also helps amplify the, the larger business goal? Yeah. So, you know, like uh, a few years ago, one of my investors was like, you spent too much time on Instagram. Mm. And now he's like, it's great that you spent so much time. <laughs> um, but the great, the, 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 the amazing thing is we've always kind of realized that, um, you know, at low 15 or even with me that the brand was bigger than the business. And we were like, this is a great problem to have, right. For anyone like this is, this is, this is the one where you can reverse engineer and fix it really fast. So that's what we've been working on, right. For me, it's, it's amazing that I've been working on this for about 10 years and, you know, content creation kind of comes to me easy. And now I do actually have a business and a product that I can plug in. So mm. how do I make both of the words collide? And we're doing a lot of that. So the next phase of Low 15 is about scaling that part of the business, yeah. uh, putting more of, you know, of that in. And so you, you'll see it in a few months. It's quite exciting. Yeah, yeah you, you're doing, um, when I say YouTube now, you're doing shows. You're, it's, it's like there is now an entire, like, there's there's the media empire and then there's the, there, there is the Low 15 empire. They both co you know, coexist. I'm going to be Oprah Winfrey. Well, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, and that's the exciting part. Right? What what most people don't get, and I, and I and I love the investor example because most people don't get the fact that the you are in a, in a sense as a content creator, you build you you are a media network, um, and you're building an audience, and and it can help you either plug in other people's products or you can you can plug in your own product and. It just seamlessly stays there as long as you're authentic, like you said, right? It doesn't feel like, you know, if, if you suddenly, I don't think of a random example that you would suddenly post about. Like if you're randomly doing toilet cleaner, that would be very off brand. It's hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, unless you're doing really, really like uh, other kind of, uh, yeah. yeah. I've always been excited to do one of those though. I hope someone <laughs> reaches out saying, will you do a toilet cleaner? I would do a toilet cleaner, right? This is the fun of it. I was just like, but that randomness aside, uh, no, I, I see that also because I think it's it's interesting to see how this whole thing is evolving. Um, you and I were on a on a panel some time back, right? We, we were talking about the whole creator economy piece, and um, and I, I think some of the things you said was so interesting because you are in many ways that it it happened organically together. It's not like you became a content creator to build your business or. Um, you didn't mean for your business to be like the platform for your content. Um, it just kind of happened in parallel tracks and then kind of started to work with each other. Um, at which point for you was it that, okay, they're working together. This is, this is, um, while, you know, you were doing it naturally. Yeah. There must I be a point where you say, okay, I need to organize this down. About four years ago. 
four, five years ago. Because we started getting a lot of opportunities and someone is like, oh, you know, we have a new show coming out on Amazon. Mm. And uh, Pooja, can you do this for us and then create a special, you know, and low 15, you create macaroons and we'll just buy a thousand boxes of macaroons and we'll give it to everybody. And I was like, oh, this is mm. great. I didn't yeah. see this, this opening up as an opportunity. Mm. And then we're like, okay, let's kind of figure how we can do more of this and, and work towards this. Which then brings me to an interesting point because a, a lot of people who listen to this podcast, you know, are, are they just kicking off their career or are somewhere midway through it trying to kind of make a pivot, etc. Um, and you always assume because a business has like, if, if you have hospitality and f and as the category, it means that that's pretty much like you need to, I, you need to be doing something in that in like literally like you either have to be a chef or you have to, you know, work in that hospitality part. But with this, with these things converging, what are you seeing as roles that even as part of your team, which are really like scaling up, which, which someone says, okay, I love food. I'm very good at X. Yeah. I have this role for me. Oh, there's just so much. Right. And that's what we, you know, I was, I was talking, I was on another panel uh, a few days ago and we were talking about jobs. Hmm. How in the next 10 years, the whole industry and job market is going to change. And you know, what is that going to evolve into? And I think just with the food business, right? Earlier, it was like you rightly said, it was just you could be a chef or you could be a restauranter. Yeah. Now you can be a food stylist, you be a content creator, you be a. There's people who write only like uh, <laughs> captions for Instagram, like that mm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. like there's there's just like so many different things within the food space as well. There's you know there's R and D, there's different things. I know so many of these, um, you know, great content creators who open their own studios mm. and now they're doing research there. They, you know, they have different kind of roles that they are hiring for, which didn't exist before, right? Like you have a recipe developer developer for YouTube. Mm. Where, where did that ever happen? You just have to yeah. make some recipes for, for social media. So um, there's a I lot. did not know that was a thing. Yeah, it's explain it's, that role to me. What so you basically are trying to say what recipes will work on YouTube is what you research. Exactly, you research and see what is what is you know what is currently working. What uh, what can we come up with? What is easy? You analyze trends. YouTube gives you trend reports of what really works. You take that and then you just say, okay, how can I scale? How can I increase distribution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's your role. Like it's great, yeah. right? but someone has to do it, right? If it's not the content creator doing it themselves. I think that's the exciting part is that as all these worlds kind of converge together, you, even if you have like, and, and I think that's a really exciting part right? as, as these worlds kind of converge together, there's so much you can kind of kind of do and, and, and kind of scale towards. So you need to have one core skill set, and then there's, you know, you have a basic understanding of an industry or just have genuine interest in the, in a certain industry, you can find a role for yourself um, and kind of do, do you think that applies to you even starting let's say a business focused on any area now. I mean, if you're just, if I'm an entrepreneur today saying, okay, I'm not a chef, but I really want to do something around food. Um, I don't think I can be a restaurant. Um, what would you say I should kind of focus on if I want to build a business? I mean, there's so many of that, right? Like now there's so many different kind of, there's consultations, there's cloud kitchens, there's, there's a whole gamut of new things that people are doing. Uh, everything that's online, you're just aggregators. Like there's so many things. So I don't think uh, just being a chef or, or being a restauranter is, is, is what is needed in the food space now. There's just, mm. and even food marketing has changed everything. You know, just you, you have so many different concepts that are delivery only and, you know, different things that are happening. So I don't think that there's one sort of box that fits all, but yeah. I, I just met someone the other day who's only making dim sum, uh, momos, like one mm. guy, and that's, yeah. that's only, one person's only making ice cream. Mm. And uh, and I, I just feel like this is such a great opportunity and a great time where, you know, when I started Low 15, businesses were so traditional. Yeah. Um, restaurants were perceived to be in a certain manner. You know, it, it was like you have to have a, a, a brick and mortar shop. You have to have a menu that spans 100 pages because, you know, we as Indians love everything and multiple yeah. and that. And I mean, right now it's great. You can do a restaurant that's only serving one kind of ice cream and you'll have yeah. to eat for it, yeah. right? So I think that it's it's a great time to be in this space. You can build your own Shopify website and, and get going like right away. You can sell merch, you can do everything. So I don't think there's a, a limitation on what you can do. You know, talking about merch as well, like there's all this food merch that's available mm. out there and it's, yeah. It's really like, you know, like my little mug here, which says <laughs> I just want cake and K-dramas. Like it just came out of 
oh you know this is what i i fe- i'm feeling right now and i feel mm. a lot of people are feeling the same yeah and it was like super successful and i just think that you have to take those risks and not wait around and you know i think that's the main problem with most people who are like waiting because mm. you're like i'm and that was my problem also before i launched our package goods right because yeah. i was like everything needs to be perfect it needs to be in order and the packaging needs to be great and the labels need to be this and then the pandemic happened and you're like you know what done is better than perfect let's just yeah. get going the minute you know we'll keep uh, revising this as we go along but the key thing is to just get started yeah you know, uh, as you come closer to the end of every episode i ask my guests a set of questions they have not changed and i don't intend to ever have them change the same set of questions ever but always the answers are more interesting than the questions um the first one actually shark because I, i'm trying to figure what you'll say um what do you spend a lot of time doing outside of work and content creation that people would be like what one second you do you spend a lot of time doing this what is that this for you uh i spend a lot of time it's mostly work um, no but I, i spend a lot of time learning new things mm. so i feel like that really drives me it could be anything it could be a sport it could be a guitar like a musical instrument it could be a language mm. it could be a goal that i set for myself so i I do think that learning is important and it really like i said it, it you are down playing me. this so i will call this one out uh, you give yourself a goal every year there is something that you will achieve uh, you have run a marathon uh, you half, have half huh? half, half fair, fair enough half marathon uh, you have learned french and given a a speech in front of 5000 french people yes yeah that's why that's why i mean down playing it um and you and i are supposed to stand up together that was our goal for last year which we did not do i'm reading the book now which is hmm. really good the book that you gave to me but um you know i feel like all through last year i kind of lost my funny bone you know hmm. i just feel like one of the things that happened to me is like i kind of because for the it was so everything was so heavy now finally i'm at a space where i'm laughing at everything i'm like everything's yeah. funny so i'll yeah. i'll after fuji that's the next one yes it's to for everyone listening there's a book called humor seriously um it's a, it's a fabulous book on like how humor can help you in everything in life like work and everything else and 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 i was telling pooja about it so i sent her the book and it's fabulous it, it, it teaches you so many things that you would not assume and and for me the base thing where the book had me was saying we all assume that humor means you have to be funny and that humor isn't that at all i think that's a great place to start uh, so yes stand up will happen stand up will happen um yeah eventually um what can you put together in an instant uh like a dessert or like a party or... this is an open ended <laughs> oh, question I, i can put together a lot of things in an instant yeah i can put together a holiday i can put together a dish i can put together a party i can uh start a business anything in an instant go amazing tell me, tell amazing me i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has given this multifaceted answer so far in 150 episodes. Everyone's come up with one. Uh, um, no, no, I wear so many different hats. You tell me which one to pick from, and I'll pick and do it. Um, anything you've read, watched, or listened to that you would recommend recently? I know that you consume a lot of interesting content. I do. I love reading, and I actually for a long time I've moved away from fiction. Hmm. I only do a lot of novels. Same here. Yeah. So. um i'm currently reading uh think again by adam grant which is really making it's me it's amazing think. yeah yeah so it's that whole learning and learning process right so i just think that it's it's great and um actually wait there's a book that i recently read which i just cried i don't know if people want to read it and cry after reading it but that was one of my like sort of i'm going to wait i'm going to pull out the name i don't um yeah it's, it's called tiny beautiful things by cheryl strade and it's it's basically about a columnist who talks who you know it's it's that journey and I, and every chapter will just make you cry so but it's really revealing so i i recommend reading it amazing um i'm actually finishing uh, dave grohl's autobiography oh how is uh, it so nice and it's so interesting so cuz i i'm i'm a person who likes to read um i i, I there was a period i only read rock biographies and autobiographies for the longest time um and but this one is great cuz it's not a traditional you know when you read something about a, a, a musician you always believe it's going to be about debauchery and like you no know, everything else this guy wasn't really into like drugs he wasn't it, it's such a lovely book cuz and it's it's almost like tiny story chapters but it's it's very nice like i i'm really enjoying it um especially when he he starts talking about um, like 
performing in the White House and George Bush says, hey, dude. And he's like, what? Did the president just call me dude? Like, stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. Um, that's what I'm just finishing off right now. I'm trying to think of the last question for you. So the last question is always a play on the name. Um, why will X not die? I'm actually going to ask you, okay, let me put it this way. Um, you, there's a term I heard sometime back, which is called um, living the multi-hyphen life. Um, so we all have hyphens in our bios, right? You know, it's, it's like you said, creator, hyphen, entrepreneur, etc. cetera. Um, you are multi-hyphenated in, in, the, in the exact sense, right? Um, why do you think that multi-hyphen vein life will not die? I think all of us are multi-hyphenated. I don't think there's you know, this who you are, who am I? And if you have one definitive answer, that's like really stopping growth. It's controlling who you can be. And I feel that that's something that I never want to do, right? I always want to be whatever I need to be in that moment. So in that moment, if it's, you know, an entrepreneur that needs to run her business or it's a chef who needs to create something or a podcaster, whatever that is. Um, so I, I just feel like, and that's all of us, right? We just mm -hmm. kind of, forget that we wear those different hats. We do it at, in our, all our relationships, right? At between a brother, sister, mother, all of those things. Mm. And I think we do it at work as well. So I just feel like that's the approach I take because the minute I say, if I define and say this is with a one word answer and say this is it, then I'll only ever be that. That's true. And where's, and where's the growth and where's the fun there? So, yes. Amazing. Thank you so much, Pooja. Thanks for coming on the 150th episode of Advertising is Dead. Um, Fabulous as always chatting with you. Now this time on the record, it's always off the, it's always <laughs> off recording button. But uh, I'm glad we could do this and, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I V M.